The Kraft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of Parquet Margarine. Millions of women all over America serve Parquet because it tastes so good. And now, in many states, you can buy this delicious Parquet Margarine in yellow quarter-pound sticks. Yes, this same spread that tastes so good now comes in handy quarter-pound sticks already colored a rich golden yellow and ready to serve. That's Parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet Margarine, made by Kraft. Well, guess what? The circus is coming to Summerfield. It'll be a great day for the kids. And guess what? Big Kid is running home with six tickets clutched in his chubby little fist. <laughs> and the Oakleys. Yep, the great Gildersleeve. And this is how he got them. Good afternoon, my friend. Are you the city water commissioner? Yeah, that's right. Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. Well, my name is Captain Blackie Sparks, manager of Sample Brothers Gigantic Circus. Well, I'm glad to meet you, Captain Sparks. Always happy to see the circus come to town. Well, I'm happy to be here. Mr. Commissioner, we'd like you to help us get water out to the circus grounds at Sherman Field. Well, I guess we can run a pipe out there. Ha <laughs> ha, good, good. I like a man who can make a fast decision. Boom, boom. Yeah, boom, boom. Oh, yes. Well, I guess it'll take quite a lot of water for all those wild animals. How many have you got in the circus? Well, Sample Brothers Gigantic Circus has a gigantic menagerie, including 10 gigantic elephants, 50 genuine Arabian ponies, one two-ton hippopotamus. Oh, have a camel? No, thanks. I don't smoke. <laughs> Well, thank you, thank you for your cooperation, Mr. Commissioner. Drop into the circus grounds any time it can do your paper. And here, here are six tickets with my compliments. Good for any performance of Sample Brothers Gigantic Circus. Well, thank you. Now I gotta run, gotta go unpack the elephant's trunk. <laughs> what? You know the circus business. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. I hope he's the guy they shoot out of the cannon. <laughs> Mr. Gilsey, want me to call him? Uh, no, thanks, Bertie. I'll go out there. Uh, got some tickets to the circus. You have? Yeah. Here's one for you, Bertie. Oh, thank you, Mr. Gilsey. My, my. Bertie's going to the circus. <laughs> well, I'll go find Leroy. He's got a circus of his own out there, Mr. Gilsey. What? He's putting on a show for that little girl he's so crazy about. Oh, is little Brenda over this afternoon? Yes, sir. She's the people and he's the circus. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'll give little Miss People a ticket, too, then. Who's that? Marjorie, what are you doing peeking through that knot hole? Oh, hello, Anki. Shh. I'm watching the circus. It's a riot. Oh? Yeah, let me look. Presenting the Clyde Baby of Summerfield, the great Leroy. You look so funny, Leroy. Oop. Marjorie, he's wearing the tops of my red pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> the great Leroy will now present his world-famous rhinoceros. Rhinoceros? Oh, his pet turtle. <laughs> the first thing this ferocious beast will do is eat a piece of lettuce. There goes our salad. <laughs> Aren't you afraid he'll bite you, Leroy? Nah. You're so brave, Leroy. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Look at him eat right out of your hand. Oh, that's a perfectly sensational act. Oh, that's nothing. Wait till I join the circus. Would you really run away and join the circus? What's this? Well, I've been thinking about it. Marjorie, how long has this been going on? I don't know. It'd be so thrilling if you did, Leroy. I just love to have my boyfriend in the circus. <laughs> <laughs> Why, George, if she keeps that up, he might do it. When would you leave, Leroy? Well, when the circus leaves town, right before the Easter examination. Yep. <laughs> what? I've already packed some of my things. You hear that, Marjorie? What do your uncle say? Oh, uncle feel okay about it. When I come back in a couple of years, rich. Oh, he will, Willie. And then we could get married. Yeah. 
and take care of Unc. In a couple of years, he'll be too old to work anyway. <laughs> I'll have to have a talk with that boy. Uh, he really has some things packed. Every spring, I have trouble with that boy. I wonder if he'd really join the circus. And I'll talk to him as soon as Brenda, Brenda leaves. Must be Judge Hooker. Probably coming over to borrow my spray gun. I bet he has aphis in his rose trellis again. Hello, Gilda. I'd like to borrow your spray gun. Yeah. I know, Judge. I have aphis in my rose trellis. Yeah. Just as I thought. You'll find the spray as usual in the garage, Judge. As if you didn't know. Well, you don't have to be so grouchy. The circus is in town, Gildy, and a big fat hippo like you should be happy. <laughs> well, the circus isn't making me happy. Huh? Leroy wants to run away and join it. Well, Gildy, at some time or other, every boy dreams of joining a circus. It's no dream, Horace. He's making plans to leave. He's already packed some of his things in his little Boy Scout bandana. Have you talked to the boy? No, but I'm going to. I've got some tickets here for him, but I'm going to tear him up. He can't run away with the circus if I don't let him go near it. Uh-huh. Gildy, how many times do you have to be reminded that the quickest way to make a boy want to do something is to forbid him to do it? It's simple psychology. Now, my advice is Judge, to... your advice is always simple. Now, Gildy, if I were you, I'd take Leroy down to the circus and get him a job. Judge, are you out of your mind? Naturally not. Let Leroy carry water and pitch hay while the circus is in town, and if I know circuses, he'll get enough of it in two days. Well... That's hard work, Gildy. Leroy hates work. By George Judge, for once I think you're using your head for something besides a hat rack. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Gildy. Too bad that you can't think of a use for yours. <laughs> <laughs> oh, go spray your apis, you old goat. <laughs> May I come in? Sure, Unc. Oop, look at this room, plastered with circus posters. King, huh? Leroy, how can you sleep with all these wild animals leering at you? What's this one? Sample Brothers Circus presents Beatrice, the beauty and her beasts. <laughs> Some lions, huh, Unc? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Leroy, I'd like to have a little talk with you. Okay. You were uh, playing circus this afternoon, weren't you? Gosh, did I leave my turtle in your pajama pocket? Uh, well, <laughs> I don't know, Leroy, but thanks for warning me. My boy, how'd you like to join a real circus? You mean Sample Brothers? Oh, boy! Well, I called a fellow I know out there, and there's a job waiting for you. You mean it, Uncle? I certainly do. Gosh, I wonder if I'll get to water the elephant. Uh, don't worry, you will. <laughs> Tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock, Leroy. And I'll come out uh, during my lunch hour and see how you're getting along. Gee, thanks, Unc. That's all right, my boy. And I know you're going to like it. <laughs> if he does, I'll sue Judge Hooker. All right, Leo. Up on your barrel. There. That's a good cat. Stay there now. Oh, Beatrice. What is it, Blackie? I'm sorry to interrupt while you're working your lines, but we've got a financial problem. Oh, another one? Where till I get out of the cage? Oh, I think we picked a lemon when we came to Summerfield. The tickets ain't selling here. Well, you're the business manager. Stir up some local interest. Why don't you try the old chestnut? You mean we get the mayor to be guest ringmaster? I thought of that, but he's out of town. Well, there must be some city official who likes to play big shot. Who was the big fellow with the handsome mustache who brought the kid down to work this morning? Didn't you say he's the local uh, water commissioner? Yes, but he's trying to cool his kid off on circuses. We couldn't get him. Well, uh, maybe I could get him. What? Let me know if he comes around again. Hey, pardon me. Well, the water commissioner. Well, hello. <laughs> <laughs> hello yourself. <laughs> 
I came down to see how Leroy is getting along, Captain. Where is he? Oh, he's around someplace. Say, we were just talking about you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Meet Miss Beatrice Sample, owner of Sample Brothers Gigantic Circus. How do you do? How do you do? <laughs> Miss Sample, you say? Yes. Well, if you're a sample of Sample Brothers Circus... <laughs> <laughs> Miss Sample not only owns the show, but she's the star. Beatrice, the beauty and her beast. Oh, yes, I've seen your picture in... In fact, I have it on the wall at home. Oh, you do? Nice. Mr. Gillespie, whenever we play a city, we like to confer an honor upon one of its important city officials. Who? Yes, and we'd like you to be guest ringmaster tonight. Uh, guest ringmaster? Why, yes, it'll be good business for us and good publicity for you as a city official. If you don't mind your picture in the paper. And uh, you shouldn't. <laughs> well, I've never been interested in publicity. How big a picture would you print? <laughs> I mean, perhaps I shouldn't pass this up if it means something to the city. Hell, good, good. We like a man who can make a fast decision. Boom, boom. Yeah, boom, boom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, now, wait a minute. Blackie, why don't you go find a uniform to show Mr. Gildersleeve? Uniform? On my way. Boom, boom. <laughs> now, Miss Sample, let's not rush me into this. Just what does a, a guest ringmaster have to do? Well, first you make a grand entrance in your gorgeous uniform. Then you step up there on the platform and you run the whole show. I do? Why don't you uh, come over here where the band is rehearsing and test your voice over the public address system? Well, I've always been a little shy of microphones. Oh, now, Mr. Gildersleeve, I'll bet that deep voice of yours will sound wonderful. Oh? Well, I might just try it out. <laughs> What'll I say? Oh, just welcome the people to the circus. You know that, ladies and gentlemen stuff. Oh? Boys, give Mr. Gildersleeve a fanfare. Well, fanfare. <laughs> now, let's see. Ladies and whoop. Oh. <laughs> Sounds pretty big. Say, you're sensational. <laughs> There, my band likes you, too. <laughs> what was that? Oh, that's Leo, my big lion. Oh, I hope Leo likes me. Hey, Albert, I thought I heard you in here. Oh, Miss Sample, this is Leroy, my little nephew. How do you like working for the circus, Leroy? I'm quitting the old circus. <laughs> quitting after half a day? I'm carrying a million buckets of water and pitch two tons of hay. <laughs> I'm quitting the circus. It's lousy. You... <laughs> now, Leroy, let's not be too critical of Miss Sample's circus. I rather like it. Are you kidding? No, I'm not. In fact, tonight I'm going to be guest ringmaster. You ringmaster? What a character. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, now, uh... Where were we, Miss Sample? <laughs> As we were saying, Bertie, no doubt about it, all kinds of dishes taste better with parquet margarine. Mr. Wall, ordinary food ain't ordinary when it's got parquet on it. Take for example... It's that delicate parquet flavor that makes the difference. Wonderful on pancakes or biscuits. But even real ordinary food, even the ordinariest kind of food you can think of. Of course, it. the reason parquet margarine has such a wonderful flavor is it's made from the selected products of American farms. The fact is, it's made like a luxury. As I was saying... Furthermore, Bertie... Uh, but, Mr. Wall, I'm saying what you're saying, but I'm saying it different. I'm saying that just the ordinariest kind of dish of warmed over vegetables makes a nice tasting dish when it's covered with golden yellow parquet. <laughs> okay, Bertie, you say it your way. What I'm saying is whether you use parquet for cookies or cooking, it's just a wonderful tasting food. That's certainly right, Bertie. And parquet costs only about half as much as the most expensive spreads. And Bertie, to steal a line from you, here's what I'm saying to our friends. Just try P-A-R-K-A-Y, the margarine with a delicious, wonderful flavor. The margarine made by Kraft that tastes so good. Well, when Sample Brothers Circus came to town, little Leroy made boyish plans to join it. To discourage the idea, the great Gildersleeve got him a job watering elephants and pitching hay. It worked. Leroy quit and went home. But guess who's ringmaster while the show's in Summerfield? 
Guess I'll go in and see if Peavy's heard about it. I need some between the act cigars anyway. Uh, hello, Peavy. Yeah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> What can I do for you this fine day? P.V., I'll have a half a dozen of these cigars. Very well. Uh, P.V., guess what happened to me when I went down to the circus grounds this noon? You get squirted by an elephant? Yeah. <laughs> no, P.V. Bit by a snake? Yeah. I have a mighty good snake bite remedy. P.V., that's not it at all. Now, no, don't tell me. Let me guess. Oh, so firm. Did you get tattoos? Ta <laughs> P.V., will you listen to me for a minute? They wanted an important official to be guest ringmaster tonight. So who do you suppose they chose? I don't know. They chose me, Peavy. You don't say. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Certainly. Have a look at this uniform they gave me to wear. I'm taking it home for Bertie to alter. Isn't that all? Yeah. The last fellow who wore it wasn't quite as big an official as I am. <laughs> Size 36. <laughs> Take a look at this, Peavy. I'm wearing this high silk hat, these white riding breeches, patent leather boots, and a red coat with gold braid. My, my. Mm -hmm. oh. I'm doing it to stimulate business for the circus. Yeah, that should stimulate business, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Takes me back to the time I wanted to join a circus. You, Peavy? She wore pink tights. She, oh, my. <laughs> Peavy, you wouldn't have liked circus life. I don't know. There's a lot to be said for it, Mr. Gildersleeve. Free board and room. I don't like hot dogs that well. Work six months and loaf six. Yeah. Well, that wouldn't be bad. Good pay, too. I know an undertaker over in Dexter who takes every summer off and travels with the circus. An undertaker? Mm. What does he do? He's a clown. He's a clown. <laughs> he makes more money in a few weeks than he does the rest of the year. Okay, well, Dexter must be a very healthy town, then. Quite a life, the circus. Chance to know interesting people, too. Take uh, Miss Beauty and her beast, for instance. What? <laughs> now, P.V., you know I'd never become interested in a circus woman. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. Oh. <laughs> I'll see you at the circus, Peavy. Well, better go down and see if Bertie has that gold sash pressed. All right, George, this ringmaster's uniform isn't bad. These whipcord trousers make quite an impressive noise. I feel like Cecil beat a mill. <laughs> yes, sir, I'll show him how to run that circus. Well, Uncle, you look gorgeous. Oh, thank you, my dear. Hi, Unc. Gosh, look at you. The circus didn't give me an outfit like that. Well, uh, you couldn't be a valet to an elephant and wear white pants, Leroy. <laughs> you said it. Yep. <laughs> After the way you felt about Leroy joining the circus, how did they ever persuade you to be ringmaster? Well, Marjorie... I don't suppose the fact that the circus owner is an attractive woman had anything to do with it. Marjorie, Miss Sample asked me as a city official, so I considered it my civic duty. The fact that she's a beautiful blonde has nothing whatever to do with it. <laughs> Leroy! Only kidding, Uncle. Uh, well, there'll be no kidding about the circus. It's a very old and honorable profession, and profitable, too. And I may just take a whirl at it this summer during my vacation. What a silly way to spend a vacation. Here's a gold sash, Mr. Gillespie. My, my, you sure look elegant. Thank you, Bertie. Just like the grand potentate of my lord. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't you gonna carry a sword, Mr. Gillespie? A sword, no, Bertie, just a riding crop. Oh, them white riding pants fit after I let them out? Oh, yeah, just fine, Bertie. I don't think anybody will notice the blue serge V in the back. <laughs> <laughs> after I put on my sash. <laughs> Marjorie, you hold one end while I whirl myself into it. All right, Auntie, go ahead. <laughs> Dizzy. <laughs> Steady, Auntie, while I tuck it in. There. Uh, thank you, my dear. Well, how do I look? Just like the grand potentate of my lodge. <laughs> <laughs> well, better get down to the lodge. Uh, I mean the circus. <laughs> Look at all the people. Say, I'm quite a drawing card. <laughs> well, the more I think of this, the more I'm convinced this is the place to spend my vacation. How else can a man travel and make money at the same time? 
unless he's a traveling salesman. Well, look at my ringmaster. Huh? You look gorgeous in your uniform, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, thank you, Miss Sample. You look gorgeous in yours, too. <laughs> Just like a drum majorette. It, say, aren't you afraid the lions will scratch your knees? Oh. <laughs> Oop. That's our cue. We're on. Oh, oh yes. We make our entrance together, don't we? Yeah, I'm a little out of step. <laughs> well, then, better get up on the platform. Good luck. Yeah, thank you. Same to you. <laughs> yeah, it's quiet in here all of a sudden. Ladies and gentlemen. That's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> That's my cook, folks. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is your guest ringmaster and water commissioner, Brockmorton P. Gildersleeve, presenting Sample Brothers' gigantic circus with the most stupendous array of stars and animals ever assembled under one big top. <laughs> Well, I got through the elephant ballet, all right. You're doing splendidly, Gildy. Hooker. I always said you belonged in a circus. <laughs> He's just jealous. Oh, you're wonderful, Mr. Gildersleeve. Keep it rolling now. It rolling? Oh, yes. And now, ladies and gentlemen, presenting for your amusement, amazement, and approval, that sensational, death-defying aerial act, the Flying Finleys. <laughs> Oop. One of them flew pretty close. Thank you, thank you. The little lady in the blue tights was Grandma Finley. And now your attention, please, to the center ring. Presenting the final and feature act, Beatrice the Beauty and Her Beasts. The bold Miss Beatrice will now enter the cage with the most ferocious assemblage of man-eating lions and tigers in Somerville. Uh, I mean the world. Ready, Jack. Hike, Leo. That Leo. He wouldn't catch me hiking with him anyplace. Hike, Leo. Mr. Gildersleeve, step down here a minute, will you? Uh, okay. Leo won't jump up on his barrel. Who? Take your riding crop and give him a prod through the bars. Uh, me? Well, um, and these bars don't look very strong. You're holding up the act, Mr. Gildersleeve. Give him a poke. Yeah, nice lion. Get up on the barrel. <laughs> <laughs> now, Leo, nothing personal. I'm a Leo myself, born in August. Give him the stick. Go ahead, kitty. Nice kitty, 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 kitty. Oh, oh, don't be so gentle. Hit him with the stick. Hit him? Well, if you say so. <laughs> I did? <laughs> well, well, thank you very much. Uncle oh, Mort, you were wonderful. Yeah, you were keen, Aunt. I was proud of you. Well, thank you, children. Well, hello, Brenda. How'd you like the show? Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, I just love you as a ringmaster. <laughs> Fine job, Gildy. Uh, thank you, Judge. Uh, now, if you'll all excuse me, I have to run over to Miss Sample's trailer, business, I have something to discuss with her. Be at home, Uncle. Uh, all right, my dear. Uh, hi, George. I made a good ringmaster if I do say so myself. This is the time to ask her about being ringmaster during my summer vacation. If I play my cards right, I think I can persuade her. Yeah. Well, her trailer door is open. Hmm, she plays the guitar. Oh, Miss Sample. Well, come in, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, thank you. Nice guitar. Mother of pearl trimming. <laughs> you play well. Well, it helps me relax after my cat act. Sort of relieves the tension. Sit down, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, uh, thank you. I want you to know I think you were terrific tonight. Well, thanks again. I dropped in because I want to have a little serious talk with you. Yeah, I'm glad you came by. I was a little lonely anyway. Huh? <laughs> well, like Blackie says, I'm a man of fast decisions, Miss Sample. And this day with you in the circus has given me some great ideas. Oh? I can tell you like music, Miss Sample. Oh, yes, I do. 
Music appeals to everybody. Now, if you had a ringmaster with a deep voice to sing a song or two, it would add a lot to the show. Oh? Well, uh, who'd you have in mind? Who'd I have in mind? <laughs> Far away places with strange sounding names. Far away over the sea. Those far away places with the strange sounding names are calling to you and to me. Oh? You bet. They call me a dreamer. Well, maybe I am. But I know that I'm burning to see those far away places with the strange sounding names calling to you and to me. Oh, Mr. Gilders. Did you like that? Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, I loved it. Good. Then that makes it easier for me to ask my question. You don't have to ask. I'll marry you. Huh? <laughs> and I'll give you half the circus. Yeah, no, but Beatrice, Miss Sample, that's not what I had in mind. I thought perhaps during my vacation this Oh, summer... I wait for your vacation. We'll do it right now. What? We'll be married tomorrow night in the center ring. Your friend Judge Hooker officiating. What? We'll make it an after show and charge 25 cents admission. You... Everybody in Summerfield will come. Everybody but me. I'm getting out of here. <laughs> The great Gildersleeve will be right back. Here's news. You can now get yellow parquet in all states where laws permit. Yes, parquet, the same delicious spread with a wonderful flavor, now comes in handy quarter-pound sticks already colored a rich golden yellow. You'll find yellow parquet costs a little more, largely because of the federal coloring tax. But it's a real saving for you in time and trouble. Try the new yellow parquet in quarter-pound sticks. Remember, where state laws permit, you can get this delicious spread, golden yellow, ready to serve. Of course, you can still buy white parquet at the low economy price. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine made by Kraft. Well, folks, the circus will be coming to your town soon. Don't miss it. It's wonderful entertainment for all ages. Circuses of just about everything. You'll see all kinds of wild animals, animal trainers, acrobats, bareback riders, clowns. Yes, sir, you'll see everybody. Everybody except me. <laughs> and me. <Yeah>, little Leroy. <laughs> Good night, folks. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. The show was written by John Elliott and Andy White with music by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, Dick Legrand, Peggy Newton, Barbara Whiting, and Eddie Marr. This is John Wall saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday, because if you think the great Gildersleeve was in hot water with that lion tonight, wait till he starts investigating a haunted house. You'll like this pleasant, quick way of making leftovers more delicious. Just add a little craft prepared mustard, then you add a lot of tang. Hidden flavors in boiled ham, sausage, most any meat pop right out. Every bite tastes better. Now you can get two kinds of craft mustard. Salad mustard, delicately spiced for those who prefer a milder flavor, and craft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both kinds in your pantry. Then with every meat dish, hot or cold, just add a little mustard, then you'll add a lot of tang. Craft prepared mustard. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. You've been listening to the OTR Gold Network. Find more classic radio at otrgold.com.
www.thepowerofpowerpodcast.com. 